Breaking loud, breaking loud, breaking loud, breaking loud. Truth, talk, tell, and show. Truth is, I'm going to tell the truth for my whole life. Truth is, I'm going to tell the truth with all my might. Truth is, God is pleased with the truths I tell. Truth is, my truths are the reason why I'm doing so well. Truth is, nobody but God could have did this. Truth is, these are the truths that you do not want to miss. Truth is... Truth is, the truth does not need any support, but I do. Like, subscribe, and set your notifications. Truth and love is what you will receive here as well as in the comments. Let's talk truth, let's tell, and let's show. Let's have a dialogue. Truth is... God's morning blessings. <clears throat> God's morning blessings, God's morning blessings to each and every one of y'all that is on the live and those that come in. God's morning blessings. Hey, um, Z. Hey, Lakeisha. Hey, Sister Natasha. God's morning blessings to each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to the Truth Circle of Love News and Updates. Today is Tuesday. Hey, twin. God's morning blessings, twins. Today is Tuesday, so those of y'all that are a part of the Truth Circle of Love Worldwide Street Ministry team, what I am here for on Tuesdays, this is the news and the updates of the ministry, and if you are a team player of the ministry, you should be fasting for seven days, I mean for seven hours on today. On Tuesday, those of y'all that are not a part of this ministry, on Tuesday, we, the Truth Circle of Love, we have been fasting and praying for the last seven, eight months on behalf of the lost and unlearned souls getting delivered and set free from up under the demonic, um, from up under the demonic soul tie with Jamila. And we have, listen, we have seen manifested evidence. We don't know who all is getting free, but we know that our fasting and praying is allowing God's hand to move on behalf of people getting free. True circle of love, we was made to worship. And that is what we do over here. Yes, I am on an exposing assignment, but the exposing assignment and the ministry is two total different assignments. To those of y'all that don't understand, the ministry, as well as the exposing assignment, as well as the teaching, it is on two, three different levels. On this platform, you will see me exposing Jamila. You will see me speaking about ministry and doing ministry, but you will also see me teaching the word of God, Bible-based teaching. If you hear me say something, you are going to hear me say that it's in the Bible. I do not get up here and I do not say anything without proving what is what. I speak truth and I also show proof. So if you are a team player of the truth circle of love, Depending on what time you opened your eyes, said your prayers, and let your feet hit the flow to step on the devil's neck, you should be fasting for seven hours. You should be fasting for seven hours. Each and every one of us as team players, on Tuesday, we fast and pray on behalf of the lost and unlearned people that are being deceived by Jamila as a team. Everybody in this ministry should have an individual day. Out of Monday through Friday, that they pick to fast for 12 hours. Me, my fast today as a team, tomorrow is my 12 hours. The elder, yesterday, Monday was her 12 day, and today is her 7 day. Everybody that is a part of this ministry, if you consider yourself a team player, if you 
pay the twenty dollar due to be active an active team player member you should be on one accord with each and every other team player during this time we have to stay on one accord this is why we are witnessing god's hand move and seeing the manifested evidence because we are doing it as one body on tuesday we fast and pray as a body on behalf of those people that are being deceived, led astray, making them so on scripture. We are praying for, we are fasting and praying for the lost and unlearned souls. And we have been doing it for seven to eight months. And when I tell y'all, I am speaking to people that has walked away. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Today, this is Truth Circle of Love news and updates. I first want to say we are in a new week. This is a new day. And if you are a team player of Truth Circle of Love, I want to tell y'all that new blessings shall be bestowed upon each and every one of us. And I pray this prayer every day. New blessings. In the form of however God wants them to come. New blessings will be bestowed on each and every one of us. That is a team player to this ministry. It will be bestowed on us. Just like we are in a new week. We are on a new day. We better be ready to receive the new blessings. That shall be bestowed upon us in Jesus name. To God be the glory. The Holy Spirit just spoke. That a lot of those court members are alive. Because of the fasting and praying on, their be on our behalf. That's right. That's right. That is right. Thank you, sis. So I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to the Truth Circle of Love Worldwide Blessing Bag Ministry. This is the updates as well as the news. The Truth Circle of Love, to those of y'all that don't know, the Truth Circle of Love, it is a worldwide blessing bag ministry. Hold on. Let me get the bag. Truth Circle of Love is a worldwide blessing bag ministry that God ordained. We, because it's we over me, this is a blessing bag. This is a blessing bag. It is a bag with different things, whether it be hygiene, whether it be snacks, or whether it be um, whatever the case may be. It is a blessing bag that we put together and we travel from state to city and we get out on feet and we walk in the homeless communities, fellowship and bringing hope back to the people and we give them and we bless them with bags like this. This is a blessing bag that somebody sent. It actually has toiletries as well as a few snacks in it. But this is what I'm talking about when I say blessing bag. Truth Circle of Love is a worldwide blessing bag ministry. What do you mean worldwide? I mean that we travel. We get on a plane. We fly to a state. We go into a city. Now, hold on. What I mean by that is, this is a worldwide blessing bag ministry that God ordained. We, because it's we over me. I am the visionary leader of the true circle of love. Because God gave me the vision to do this same ministry right here in my vicinity, in Houston, Texas. And then in March of last year, God said, take it on the road. So this right here, this is the blessing bag. It's we over me. It's we over me. We, myself and I as the visionary leader and team players from all over the world, we travel to different states. That's right. We're exposing through true ministry. That's right. We travel the world. We travel different states, cities, and we go into the homeless communities that God leads us to. No man tells us where to go. No man tells us where to go. We go into the places that God sends us. We don't go, okay, well, we're going to go here, we're going to go there. No. Every city, every state that I travel into, it is a true, true circle of love team player that resides there. But we go into the places where the Holy Spirit leads us to go. To God be the glory. This is a blessing bag. 
this is what um this is what we this is what we do. Like I said, we get things that the homeless people can eat right then and there. We don't go into no restaurant and buy no burgers. We don't put no noodles inside of the bags. We don't do that. We get we get nutritious stuff. We have protein, whether it be tuna fish, whether it be um, well, tuna fish, whether it be Vienna sausages, whatever the case may be, we get protein, we get snacks. How y'all doing? We get snacks. We get all of the things that is good for the people. We don't just go out there and give them a whole bunch of junk. We do things in decency and order over here in this ministry. When we go shop, we go shop, y'all. When we go shop, we go shop. And I thank God for the whole team worldwide, whether you have been actively out there serving or if you're just a financial support at this time. My prayers is that everybody get to actively go out and serve in one state, in one city or another. This is my everyday prayer. I want everybody to experience what me as well as those team players that have already experienced it. I want everybody to have this experience because to experience it firsthand is a whole total different than you looking at it y'all and i'm telling y'all that over here in the true circle of love we have we have um we have three mottos we have three mottos our first motto is over here is that true circle of love the earth is our turf everywhere the true circle of love rome is home this is what the holy spirit gave me this is what the Holy Spirit gave me, and this is what I stand on. The earth is our turf, meaning that we travel from state to city. It's not no no area is unfamiliar. The earth is true. The earth is our turf. Everywhere the true circle of love roam is our home. This is a life-changing ministry. We are going out to homeless communities that people are overlooking every day. This right here, the truth, the earth is our turf. Every where we roam is home is one of our mottos. Another motto that the Holy Spirit gave me is this. If you are looking for ministry to be seen, just looking at me right here, it's not going to happen. Because ministry is in us. It is not on us. Ministry is in each and every one of us as a true circle of love team player. As the leader, ministry is in me. It's not on me. We do the work and we let the work speak for itself. What I mean by it's in me and not on me, meaning that I don't have to go around talking about it and boasting and bragging about it. We do the work and we let the work speak for itself. Ministry is in us. It's not on us. So if you're looking for it on the outside of us, you will not find it because it is implanted in us. It is instilled in us. Ministry is in our heart, not on the outside of our outer appearance. Our mission, our mission for this ministry is to bring hope back to as many homeless people that we can in all parts of the world. This is the mission. The mission is to bring back hope. This is the mission. I tell y'all, people think that when people become homeless, the first thing they lose is a place to live, a place to lay their head. But I am here to tell y'all that the first thing that these people lose is hope. And this is why this is our mission. Our mission is to go out into these states, into these cities, and reach as many homeless people that we can, bringing hope by, back to them just by... Blessings from Texas, just by fellowshipping, just by mingling, just by fraternizing, just by being in their presence. The mission to this ministry is to bring hope back to how so many bring hope back to as many homeless people that we possibly can, because that is what they lose first. And if you lose hope, you lose faith. You lose hope, you lose faith. And this is why this is our mission. God has called us to go out and be a blessing to homeless communities all over the world. We are currently right now, as I sit right here, we have given out 1,103 blessing bags since July of 2023. 
We have did a whole bunch of other things too, but I'm talking about blessing bags right now. Y'all see, we did hot meals, we did backpack drives, we helped people with bills, we had a um a, a per, um, one of our team players, we helped her daughter for Christmas. Y'all see me when I was in Miami, we bought the little guy some shoes. We have did a whole bunch of things, but what I'm talking about right now is the 1,103 blessing bags that God has allowed us to give out in eight different states because we went to Florida and Fort Lauderdale, and that's the state of Florida. Eight different states, including Texas. Eight different states, nine cities. Nine different cities, but eight different states since July of 2023, and we are just in April of 2024. We have given out 1,103 blessing bags to God be the glory. God gets all the glory, and of course, the credit goes back to the creator for every blessing that we have, get, have received and every blessing that have went out. Every blessing that we have received and every blessing that has went back out God gets the glory and the credit goes back to the creator. And all I can do is say, thank you, Lord, because this is God. This is, has nothing. We are the workmen, but God is the one that orchestrated this worldwide ministry. I want to say this. I thank each and every one of you that follow the instructions that the Holy Spirit spoke to me when we first sat here and was putting this ministry together. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for following the instructions of the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit spoke to me concerning the $20 team player fees, the team player dues. Thank each and every one of y'all that is faithful and obedient to the Holy Spirit concerning your $20 due a month. I understand that people have different things going on. And this is why when the Holy Spirit spoke to me concerning the $20 due, because that is a mandatory fee. This is why the Holy Spirit told me to break it down in the way that I did. If you have to cash out $1 a day for $20, for, for 20 days, that's $20. If you have to cash out $1 a day for 20 days straight or however many, however, in a 30-month day, in a 30-day period, it does not matter. If you have to pay $5 a week, it's four weeks in a month, that is okay. If you have to pay $10 every two weeks, that is okay. If you can pay the $20 at one time, if you can pay up a couple of months, it's okay. It's a $20 mandatory due to be an active team player. What I mean by that is, if you get just got $20, if you just got $20, because I don't know everybody's circumstances, if that's all you got is $20 to put in, when we go out there and do the ministry that month, you can sit at your house and you can say, thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't have but $20, but that $20 due is a blessing in what's going on. So I am still a part of this blessing. To God be the glory. It makes sense why the Holy Spirit told me this, y'all. It makes sense why the Holy Spirit told me this. $20, you can pay it a dollar a day, 20 days, $5 every week, $10 every two weeks, $20 at one time. You can pay your dues up. Trust and believe me. Trust and believe me that 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 is 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 I'm taking notes of it. I have to now. I wasn't at first, but now the Holy Spirit telling me I have to write down who is paying their notes so I can know who is active. Who is active? I thank y'all for being obedient. Because that is what the Holy Spirit spoke through me. I told y'all sitting up here, the Holy Spirit said $20 mandatory due to be an active team player. To be active on the blessings that we are going out and bless these people with, $20. But I also want to say to y'all, because the Holy Spirit told me, we're not talking about no tithes. We're not talking about offerings. We're not talking about special seeds. and We're not talking about here. Over here. 
Anything that comes into this ministry financial is a token of love. Why is it a token of love? Because nobody is asking you to give it. You are allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you concerning the token of love and you give what the Holy Spirit tell you to give. And this alone makes you a cheerful giver because you are not listening to man tell you to give a certain amount. You are allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you concerning what the Holy Spirit wants to, you, to give to you. So I have to thank y'all for allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to those that do give tokens of love. Everybody that's a team player, no, everybody don't give tokens of love, but that's okay. That's okay because God is going to speak to everybody at one time or another about a token of love. You know why? Because tokens of love is what makes it possible for us to travel. Tokens of love is what makes it possible for me to get on the plane. Tokens of love what makes it possible for us to have a place to stay when we are where we at in this city or this state. Tokens of love is what makes it possible for us to go into Walmart when I'm in these cities in these states and spend $300 to $500 to get the things to put in the bag. Tokens of love is what makes it possible. This is why I tell y'all, we have a motto over here. It's we over me. And if it's we over me, if each and every one of us give a little, nobody has to give a lot. Nobody has to give a lot. God has not failed true circle of love yet because we ain't winning now state. We ain't winning now city and we wasn't able to do what God wanted us to do. Yes, some states we go in and we do more. Some states we go in and we do less. But we work with the finances that God has allowed each and every one of us to put in so for that month. We work with what we got. 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 We work with what we got, y'all. So this is the thing. Don't, I thank God because, like I said, I ain't just started this ministry when I got on this thing. I've been doing this for five years. Me and Chinese did it in Houston, Texas from 2018 to 2021 by ourselves. By ourselves. By ourselves, just me and Chinese. So I have to thank each and every one of y'all for listening to the Holy Spirit concerning the tokens of love because tokens of love is make, makes it possible for us to do all of the stuff that they see done. That makes you a cheerful giver from your heart, not because somebody told you to give something. Again, if everybody give a little, hey, Khalees, if everybody give a little, nobody has to give a lot. If you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you concerning the token of love, you know for a fact that you are a cheerful giver because man is not telling you to give a amount. The Holy Spirit told you to give a amount. And if you are following the Holy Spirit, that makes you a cheerful giver because you listening to the voice of God. Let God lead you to do all that you do concerning this ministry. I want y'all to let God lead y'all to do everything. If God tell you to 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 Buy something to put in the bag. Let it be God telling you to do it. Don't do it because you want to do it. If you want to be a part of the ministry and you want to come out there, allow the Holy Spirit to say, well, you, you want to serve? Don't allow yourself or nothing that I say make you want to do something that the Spirit is not telling you to do. Because I want everything... I, just like I'm spirit led, I want y'all to be spirit led too. I do everything because I'm led by the spirit to do it. And if I am the visionary leader of this ministry, I want y'all to do the same thing. Allow the spirit to lead you to do whatever. Don't do nothing because you want to do it on your own. Don't do nothing because you want to do it because Roshana said do it. Do it because the spirit of God has enlightened you to do it. All the way down. And what I'm speaking about, I'm speaking about let the spirit speak to you all the way down to you being in attendance of serving the homeless community physically. Before you get in a, on a plane, before you get in the car to drive somewhere to meet me, make sure the Holy Spirit is telling you to come. Don't just do it because, oh, Roshana is in Philly and I'm 10 minutes from Philly. I'm going to go to Philly. If God ain't told you to come to Philly to meet Roshana, do not do it. Be spirit led, y'all. Use wisdom. You cannot go wrong when you look at everything from a spiritual standpoint first. 
And this is what I have learned to do. And this is what I live by. Before I look at anything in the natural, I look at it in the spirit. You can never go wrong if you're, you led by the spirit. You can never go wrong. The spirit is not going to lead you wrong. You ain't going to have to think it's wrong. You're not going to assume it's wrong. You're not going to get no good feeling that it's wrong. When it's the spirit. When you look at stuff from the natural in yourself and in your flesh, everything going to look wrong. But when you look at it and you get the wisdom from God, which is the Holy Spirit, you will never be led wrong. Anybody that is here, led by the Spirit, anybody that is on this live, that is led by the Spirit of God, and they want to become a team player. You are on this live and you are not a team player. You don't know. You are not a team player. And you want to be a part of this peculiar worldwide blessing bag ministry that blesses the homeless people all over the world. Not just in our communities. We are going above and beyond. Because I could have started this ministry and just did the community like I did down there when the Holy Spirit told me to do Houston. When the Holy Spirit gave me this vision for this ministry, the Holy Spirit didn't tell me to make blessing bags and give it to the people in Galveston County, Texas City or Lamarck where I live at. I had to drive 45 minutes. Every time I went, I had to drive 45 minutes because the Holy Spirit instructed me specifically to go by the bus station downtown in Houston. Where it was a lot of people there. I didn't have to look for the people. The Holy Spirit led me right to the people. And I was out there every two weeks. Giving them blessing bags. Feeding them. Ministering to them. Giving them clothes. Giving them shoes. I was out there spending time with the people. Doing what the Spirit of God tells us to do for those that are in need. I told y'all ministry is not in me. I mean ministry is not on me. It's in me. Ministry is on me. Not in me. If you just looking at me. You won't be able to know. But as soon as I open my mouth, trust and believe you will know my calling. True circle of love, we were made to worship. So if you are not a team player and you hear this live, you want to be a part of the spirit that spoke to you about being a part of it. Because I just said be spirit led. If you come on this live and you hear this message. And you want to be a participant. You want to be an active team player. You want to pay your $20 dues. You want in on the blessings. You might want to even join us in one of these cities of these states. Text the, text the ministry number. 713-449-1883. Say who you are. Say where you at. Say I, I want in. I want to be a part of this worldwide blessing. I want to be a part of this worldwide blessing. I want to be a part of this worldwide blessing. God's morning blessing, Sister Tanetta. That's right. Ministry is in me. It's not on me. So if you want to be a part of this ministry, if you want to be a part of this worldwide blessing, you can be. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you about it, though. Don't just want to be a part of it because you feel like, okay, they going somewhere. Because anybody that comes in here and they come on their own, God is going to reveal who they are and he's going to remove it. We didn't seen it happen too many times. We didn't seen it happen too many times. All you got to do is text the, the, the ministry number 713-449-1883 and say, I want in. I want in. And that will put you in the place to be a part of this big old blessing. This is a big blessing to those that actively serve, to the truth circle of love team players, those of y'all that already have been out there and actively served in a city or a state near you. We have a dress code. We have a dress code. Uh-uh, that's wrong. We have a dress code. We have a dress code in the true circle of love. We have a dress code attire. When we go out and serve, we all look alike. We are warriors. In this end time ministry that God has orchestrated and ordained. We are warriors. We are warriors. So therefore we go out 
looking like what we are. We don't go out and do the work of the Lord looking no any kind of way. We are all on one accord in everything that we do. So I am here to tell you, those of you who would love to actively serve, if you do want to meet us in a city, if you do want to meet us in the state, if you plan on being out there when we are actively serving, you have to be in dress code. It ain't no if, it ain't no buts about it. You have to be in dress code when we are out there serving. This is how the Holy Spirit has told me to do it. And this is how we have been doing it. Everybody that is actively serving, no matter what city, no matter what state that we are in, we must all be in full uniform at all times when we are out there serving. We have different shirts. For every different city, every different state, we have different shirts. Camouflage bottoms. I am in attire. This is the um, meet and greet shirt that we had when we went to the Bible Museum. True circle of love made to worship. These, the shirts that we will have, I'll get the shirts made. And the bottoms have to be camouflaged. Ministry shirts, camouflage bottoms. The camouflage bottoms can be pants. It can be shorts. It can be a skirt. It can be leggings. It can be whatever. But it has to be regular camo. This color camouflage. This color, the regular color. Not no orange. Not no blue. Not no red. Not no none of that. Not no none of that. Not no none of that. It has to be regular camouflage. You cannot pull up and go out with us and serve to do ministry and you have on camouflage and you got red, you got orange, you got purple. It's the regular camouflage. I am in attire. I am in attire. True circle of love made to worship and I have on the camouflage bottoms. This is why I got up here today. This is the true circle of love dress uniform for when we go out worldwide and go out and pass out these blessing bags in the homeless communities in every city, every state that we have already been through. We have been to eight states, nine cities since July of 2023 to God be the glory. You have to be in attire when you are actively serving. Every team player, every team player that wants to actively serve, you are responsible for buying your own shirt. You are responsible for purchasing your own shirt. Those of y'all that know, I have a shirt person that presses. She has given us a discount on the shirts. Everybody is responsible for purchasing their own shirt as well as they camo bottoms. When you pull up, if we in Vegas, when you pull up in Vegas, when you pull up in Vegas, you should already have your camouflage pants and I should have the shirts or if I mail them to you, you'll have your shirts. It depends on how it goes. I am just telling y'all this. This is how we, because it's we over me. This ministry is about we we, we, not me, 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 but we, 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 everybody, everybody, we are on the same accord. Even though that I am the visionary leader, I am no different from y'all. I am the leader, but I am also an active team player because I get out there and I do the work just like everybody else. Matter of fact, I do more of the work to God be the glory. So go out be the glory. Look at Kalisa. We got, we got a team player. We got a team player. Welcome Kalisa Brown to the truth circle of love. To go out be the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just gained a, a team player right here. Kalisa Brown. She said, okay, I would love to join y'all team. To go out be the glory. This is how we, the truth circle of love warriors, get out in the field on feet and do the work. This is how we get out there. This is how we go. We are dressed 
like warriors. We go out there dressed like warriors. When they see us coming, they know that we are warriors for God's kingdom. They know that we are coming to give them some blessings from God. So they receive us with love. We don't go out there mitchmacking and looking all kind of ways. None of that. So to God be the glory. I can honestly sit here and tell y'all that God is not only growing, but God is allowing true circle of love to glow. We are growing by numbers, but God is allowing us to glow. God is allowing us to glow. God is allowing the true circle of love to glow in this end time last day because true circle of love is God's end time ministry where people all over the world can do what God has called each and every one of us to do as a team. We are a team. That's why I speak we over me. We are a team. That's why I say we are a body. We are one body of Christ. And everybody got their own parts to function in. And this is why this ministry is blossoming. It is growing and it's the glow up for me. It's the grow up and the glow up for me. But to go out be the glory y'all. True circle love is a body. Of Christ and we all have our own parts to work and function in to keep this body true circle of love as healthy as possible we all have a part to play in our body functions in order to keep the true circle of love body as healthy as it possibly can this body right here is healthy that's right. It's the glow up and the grow up. But God gets the glory and the credit goes back to the creator. Because the numbers is going this way. Um, the blessings is coming in. And I'm going to tell y'all about a blessing that I got yesterday. And I'm going to show y'all. Not only tell y'all. This is how God works. I have a couple of scriptures that y'all know I have to go to scripture. Because I can't get up here. And I don't know. So I'm going to go to Ephesians. Ephesians 4. 11 through 13. This is the true circle of love news and updates for the ministry. Yeah, we are getting ready to go into Baltimore and Baltimore, May the 2nd through May the 6th. We will be in Baltimore. Be more careful. Couples doing ministry in Baltimore. We will be in Baltimore serving the homeless communities. We already went to Baltimore in November. Matter of fact, I had this shirt on when we was in Baltimore at the Bible Museum. But we are headed back to Baltimore to bless the homeless people. Okay. I just want to read a couple of scriptures. And then I want to give drop some chocolate diamonds. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says this. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in knowledge of the Son of God. And become mature, attaining to whole, to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. And I am going to read it again. It says, so Christ himself, he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers to equip his people for works of service. True circle of love works for service so that the, this body, the true circle of love body of Christ may build up until we all reach unity in faith and in knowledge of the son of God. And we become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reader of the words, to the his, listeners of the word, as well as the doers of his words. First Peter, that was Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. Now I'm going to First Peter. First Peter 
4, 10 through 11. Hold on. First Peter 4, 10 through 11. Listen to me, y'all. Listen to me, y'all. This is this is this has to do with what the ministry. With these scripture references that I'm talking about is what we are doing. I'm not just up here giving y'all no scripture references. These scripture references refer to what true circle of love is doing presently in this time. First Peter 4, 10 through 11 says this. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. Let the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word. I am about to drop a, a chocolate diamond that I don't want nobody to miss. So I pray that each and every one of y'all catch this chocolate diamond. Every believer, every true circle of love team player, no matter who they are or what they do, are called to minister to others and make disciples. We are all called. We are all called to minister to others. No matter what they do, who they are, we are all called to minister to others and make disciples. You can be a nurse. You can be a nurse. You still call to minister. You can be a doctor. You are still called to minister to others and make disciples. This is what the word of God says. You can be a business owner, but you are still called to minister to others and make disciples. You can be a dog groomer. And I put this one in it because I just got that dog groomed. But you are still called to minister and to um, be disciples of others. You can be a crazy combination of all five things that I just named. And you will still have the call of God to serve those around you and to tell them about Jesus. We all was called to minister to people and make disciples of people. That is why I sit before y'all right now with this truth circle of love made to worship. We are all made to worship. We are all called to minister. We are all called to make disciples of other people. The scripture says baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And this is what we do. So many people have asked me, well, how do I know if I'm called to minister? How do I know if I'm called to do ministry? How do I know if I'm called to do ministry? I hear this so often. I can only speak for myself about how I was called. And I'm going to give y'all my testimony here because this is a true circle of love news and updates. And y'all need to know the background on the visionary leader, which is myself. I can only speak for myself. I know that there are many ways. You can know if God called you to ministry. I was called through a prophetic dream in 2009, in September to be exact. I told y'all that God speaks to me through dreams, prophetic dreams. I've been having them since I was a kid. In September of 2009 is when the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I had just moved to Seabrook, Texas, about 20 minutes away from where I live at right now. I was living in Houston, Texas, on the north side of Houston, and my mom had fell sick. So I moved back closer to home, but not coming right back to home. Seabrook is about 20, 25 minutes from Texas City, where I am born and raised. So I moved to Seabrook in September of 2009. I dreamed, I had a dream of me being at a place, an unfamiliar place. And it was just a lot of people around me. And when I woke up, I was in awe. Because I was looking around. I, in the dream, I was around. It was like me in an unfamiliar place. And it just had a whole bunch of people. 
So I woke up and I was in awe. Why? Why was I in awe? The reason why I was in awe because I was dreaming. First, it was a prophetic dream. It seemed like it was real. But during that time, during that time that I had that dream in September of 2009, when I moved to Seabrook, I, Roshana, who sit before y'all right now, I was a certified loner. I was a certified loner. I separated myself from people completely. I actually moved to Houston so that my family members wouldn't come knock on my door anytime they wanted to. I moved way, way far away to be a loner. I was a certified loner. But here I am, I done moved in this new house. I done moved back closer to my hometown. And now I done went to sleep and God then gave me a prophetic dream. And all I could see was me and a whole bunch of people. I said I was a certified loner. I still am outside of the ministry in this exposing assignment. Outside of me doing what thus says the Lord, I am still a certified loner. I stay in my house. I do what God tell me to do. If somebody come to my door, it's my kids or my grandkids or I know it. Don't nobody come up in my house. Ain't too many people been in my house. I am still a certified loner. So now that I had this prophetic dream, here it is me and I see all of these people. The Holy Spirit interpreted that dream to me as saying, now is your time to go out and evangelize. I received my call into ministry to minister through the Holy Spirit showing me in a dream, me with a whole bunch of people. And when I woke up, the Holy Spirit interpreted the dream. Now is your time to go out and evangelize. And I stepped out on faith. Just like I was recently telling y'all. When the Holy Spirit told me to go out and evangelize, I was just telling y'all this testimony. I would walk up to people and the Holy Spirit would have me to say stuff. And I was so uncomfortable doing it to where I would do it and I would just hurry up and walk away. If y'all in the comments and y'all not on the topic of the ministry, I am not talking about Jamila. This is not no exposing live. That is very disrespectful if y'all talking about Jamila on my live when I'm talking about ministry. I am not talking about Jamila on this live. This is not no exposing live. This is why I put the title up. If you looked at the thumbnail, if you looked at the title, this is Truth Circle of Love News Updates. This don't got nothing to do with Jamila. I am sorry. That is very disrespectful. I'm, I'm, I'm very serious. And this is why I rebuke people. This is why I rebuke people right here. Because people come up on your stuff and they do what they want to do. I don't mean no harm to nobody. But I refuse to be disrespected. I am not talking about no Jamila. My ministry don't have nothing to do with Jamila. I am exposing Jamila. Jamila is not attached to the true circle of love. And if you came on this live, you see that I'm talking about true circle of love. Why are you putting Jamila in the comments? I don't know. I don't know. Now, back to my regular schedule program. This is why people get blocked. And then they be feeling in their feelings. Don't be disrespectful over here. You don't have to respect me. You don't have to watch me. You don't have to like me. You don't have to believe me. But what you're going to do is... You're not going to disrespect me on my own platform. I'm sorry, y'all. And this is how I have to be. Because if one person do it, everybody going to do it. So this is why the Holy Spirit allowed me to call it out. This is not no exposing assignment. When I'm talking about Jamila exposing, you can say whatever you want to say in the comments. But please respect my ministry. Please respect my ministry. That's all I ask. Thank y'all. Like I said, I stepped out on faith, just like I was recently telling y'all, and I followed the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is where I am today. Where I am today is not where I have always been. I have not always been here, spiritually nor biblically. I didn't have the biblical knowledge that I have now in 2009. I wasn't walking heavily in my spiritual journey in 2009. That is when the Holy Spirit told me to go out. 
I started evangelizing. The Holy Spirit had me going up to people. The Holy Spirit had me gathering people and putting people here and taking people there and doing this and, and fellowshipping with people. The Holy Spirit had me walking up to people saying, God said this and, 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 and the Holy Spirit showed me this and all of that. I did not feel comfortable in it. I am telling y'all about how I received my calling for ministry. Some people receive their calling from a prophetic word. Some receive it either from a prophetic confirmation. I received my ministry calling through a prophetic dream. God brings, sometimes God can bring that conviction as well, but only through the reading of the Bible. God can bring that conviction to you to let you know that you are called to do ministry, but he only can do it if you are actively reading your Bible. When it is done this way, it is as if you are reading the Bible. Hey, um, Yolanda, it is as if you are reading the Bible. As if a verse related to the calling jumps out of the page and it shakes and it touches your spirit. These are the testimonies of the Holy Spirit. Some people receive they call in to do ministry while they're sitting there reading the Bible. You can be reading the Bible and you're reading the scripture and that scripture jump out in you and it goes into your spirit. And that's how the Holy Spirit will convict you that it's time for you to go do the work. Galatians. Galatians 6, 2. You good, Tasha. You good, Tasha. I wasn't trying to call nobody out, but I got to do what thus says the Lord. And if one person do it, then everybody going to start trying to do it. And that's why I got to call it out. So, Natasha, sis, you good, sis. I accept the apology. You good, sis. Galatians 6, 2 says, carry each other's burden. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Hey, Takesha, I such Asia. Uh, um, Takesha, you need to get with me. Text the... Text the ministry number, sis. Takesha, can you please text the ministry number 713-449-1883? Cause I got in your daughter Asia's inbox last night. I received your token of love. And I I I I love you, sis. So get at me because I don't know how to get at you on um on social media, uh Takesha. But I do want to um talk to you, sis. I, I text Asia, I text my niece Asia last night. And told her to tell you to give me your social media information. <laughs> Y'all hold up. I am I'm a spiritual being and I, I feel spirits and I'm on live right now and I don't I don't let everybody in my house. No problem. I'll wait for you yes, right here. Since you're here, you can watch. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Y'all give me a minute. The um pest control is here. Put your phone I can hear you. What happened? I said, did you have fun yesterday with e -plus? Oh, I didn't even get to see it, but I got some pictures. I got some, some pictures. Some people in my ministry, they got they got to actually witness it. We didn't get no darkness. No. But they did in um um Indianapolis, Indiana. My spiritual twin, um, she got to see it. I seen her picture, she was live. So I got to see a couple of people that actually got to see witness the darkness. This part of Texas that we in, we didn't get to see that. It would have been beautiful to see it, but we didn't get it, so. All right, Sister Takesha. Hey, Renata. <laughs> y'all just give me a minute. The pest control is here. And I'll be right back with y'all so we can continue talking about this worldwide ministry. But we are at Galatians 6 2. That's the scripture reference that we're in right now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You have a blessed one. You too. I'm back. Yeah, my city was dark when the eclipse came. Yeah. Um, 
I love you too, um, Takesha. The I'm I'm a sidebar right quick. I gotta show y'all, tell y'all something. So that was um the apartment complex um people the um the pest control people. Even though I don't have no, I don't have roaches. They just come out to the door. But it's a young lady. I don't know if y'all heard me. Did y'all just hear me rebuke that lady? I felt her spirit months ago, years ago, when I moved here. And she is an atheist. She was just trying to come in my house. And I don't know if y'all heard me and said, I did, I did it like this. No, ma'am. I said, I am, I'm a spiritual being. I don't like all of those things coming to my house. And I did not let that lady in my house. I'm saying this for a reason, y'all. When you are an anointed being of God, you have to stand in your boldness. You have to stand in the authority of God. I felt that lady's spirit. Her name is Lulu. I felt her spirit two years ago. You, you, you heard me see? You're not coming in here. Under no, and I'm about to cry. <laughs> I got chills all over my body. I don't play. I don't play. I didn't know if y'all heard me. I really didn't care if y'all heard me. I didn't care about how she felt when I, she was trying to walk in my house and I did her just like that. I don't want all those spirits in my house. I don't do that. And that's how everybody, we all supposed to be like that. If you are a true anointed being of Christ, you will handle the situation like I just did. I did not mean no harm. I said it with love. And she respected it. Because God showed me her spirit. I went two years without my house being inspected. Because she was to come in my house. And I refused it every time. She said she was coming in to watch him. But I'm in here. I don't, I'm don't. i in my own house. And she gonna say, okay, well, since you're here, I don't need to come in. You wasn't coming in anyway. I'm sorry, but I'm not. This is how I live my life, y'all. And the Holy Spirit is really acting up in me right now. When I get to getting teary-eyed, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit letting me know. That's the Holy Spirit letting me know that I did what the Holy Spirit told me to do. I don't care who you is. I serve God. Not people, not man, not woman. I don't care who you is. I don't care about you being no apartment manager. I don't care about you being no pastor. I don't care about you being the police. I don't care about you being any of that stuff. I know who God is. <laughs> my twin say she the same way. Maintenance can't enter my apartment. This is why so many people. This lady been trying to get in my house too, too much. This lady been trying to get in my house too bad. Too bad. I changed the locks. That top lock, they can't get in here. Mm -mm. The only way they can get in here is if I'm here. Because when I leave, I lock that top lock. I changed it. Thank you, sis. I have to do with the spirit. That lady been trying to get up in my house too bad. Y'all heard what I told her. I am a spiritual being. I don't let all them different spirits come in my house. And I said it nicely. I said it politely. But I said it very sternly. You have to be in tune with God. If you sis, Norda, you need you need a purging. Norda, you need to be purged, sis. I need to get home. I need to get my hands on you, Norda. I need to get my hands on you. Because let me tell you something. If you have any type of attachment to God, you're going to be able to feel spirits. I can walk by somebody and feel their spirit. I don't have to talk to them. I was just on the phone with Mama Doris a couple of nights ago when I went to go get Benoit. And I walked out of Benoit's brother's house. And there was a young lady walked by me. And Mama Doris can tell y'all this. A young lady walked by me. I don't know this lady from Adam from Eve. But as soon as that lady walked by me, I felt her spirit heavy. And I asked her while Mama Doris on the phone. Mama Doris thought I was talking to her. I said, ma'am, are you okay? It just came out. It's the Holy Spirit. I said, ma'am, are you okay? Hey, Sasha. I said, ma'am, are you okay? 
She mumbled something. The Holy Spirit wouldn't stop. Ma'am, are you okay? She wouldn't say nothing. Ma'am, are you okay? And she boasted out and she said, no, I'm not okay. Something is going on with my son. My son locked up in the house. She was trying to bust the window out. I don't know what was happening. But God showed me that lady just got her, me passing by her like that. And Mama Doris was on the phone. I can feel them. I can feel the spirit. I am a true anointed being. And anything that is not a God is not coming around me. You're not coming up in here with me. You have to be a godly being. I cannot let no spirits. That's why Benoit cannot come over here at certain times. Because Benoit go around a whole bunch of different people that have demons. And I have to pray them off of him. They not coming up in here. I got a dog. Kobe is right there. Do y'all not know if you have an animal? If Do y'all not know if you have an animal? And you let somebody in your house and they carry demons? Did y'all not know that them demons go in your animals and they stay in your house? The people be gone and the demons is still here? No. I buy, block, and rebuke it. Right now in the name of Jesus. That lady didn't break my threshold, baby. She didn't come. She was at that door, but she didn't come across that door. No, I'm going to have to make some time to talk to you. I'm going to have to make some time to talk to you, Narda. I'm going to have to make some time to talk to you. I be busy, but I need to make some time to talk to you. So I'm just saying, I did, that lady did not come across it. That lady didn't break that plane. She stood there with that door, that screen door open. And that was it. To so God be the glory. Hey, Mama Doris. Y'all. Listen, I was anointed. I was anointed, okay, I already had an anointing on me, but when I re, re, when I re received this, this mantle, when I received this mantle, my anointing tripled the times. My anointing went sky high. I was already anointed be. My discernment was already on fleek. My anointing was already on fleek. But when I received this mantle, God took my anointing and it shot to the roof. My discernment, it shot to the roof. Sister Takesha said, that's Godly boldness in Jesus' name. Yes, it is. Mama Doris, you're going to have to go back and listen to this live, but I'm going to give you a little update. So I moved here in 2021, September the 1st. And they told me of this lady named Lulu who had to come inspect the apartments. Immediately meeting the lady, a person out there, the spirit showed me who she was. She's an atheist. She does not believe in God. And I refused to have her come to my house. So now that they did, they just did the um, came spray for the rodents or whatever. There ain't no rodents here. She came with them. I let him come in that door, mama. But when she got ready to step foot in my house, I politely told her I did not want her to come in my house. I am an anointed being and I don't let all those different spirits in my house. I did it the way that the Holy Spirit told me to do it. That's how I did it. I did it nicely. <laughs> All right, mama, I figured that's what you was doing. I figured you was in training, mama, to God be the glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to have to tell you about that after this live, mama. So where we at now, y'all? Um, Galatians 6.2. Galatians 6.2 tells us. <laughs> Natasha said, you sure did. <laughs> y'all, I, and I had got emotional because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit just assured me when I was about to cry that was nothing but the Holy Spirit assuring me that that's what he had led me to do and how to do it I ain't never had to do that but when she was trying to come in I had to do it right then I was not going to let that lady in my house I'm sorry I don't know what else to say I was not letting her in my house period all spirits don't come up in here so Galatians 6 2 says carry each other's burden and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. 
let me say this. And I am, this is the spirit of God speaking. I'm going to say this again, y'all. I don't think people is understanding. I just said this. If you are in these comments and you are talking about Jamila, you are way off topic. This live right here is not an exposing live. This live right here is the news and update to my ministry. Sasha, I don't know if you was here when I just said that, but if you are in these comments, you didn't look at the title. This is not an exposing live. I am not, nobody should be in my comments talking about Jamila. I, that's right. I had to stand the ground as the warrior in Christ that I am. Yes, I did. Nobody should be. Jamila's name should not be in my comments. I'm sorry. Jamila's name should not be in my comments on this live right here. Respectfully. And I don't need nobody to respect me. But I do not want no disrespect on my live. I ask y'all nicely to stay on topic. Stay on topic. This is ministry that we're talking about. And if you're talking about what Jamila talked about this morning, you need to wait till tomorrow morning when I come and expose that. I hold your comments for tomorrow because I will be, I will be back tomorrow. Um, thank you, Heartstring. I ain't heard from you in a minute. Hey, sis. I haven't seen you in a minute, sis. Please, please, please. Do not put anything in my comments today on this live about Jamila. <laughs> Do not. People want to sit there and say that I'm the one that's contained with Jamila. No, I'm the one that's exposing Jamila. But I feel as though these people that come in my comments when I'm not talking about Jamila and they putting Jamila in it. Y'all can't get over to Jamila. Talk about Jamila when I'm exposing Jamila. This is my ministry that I'm talking about. This is my ministry that I'm talking about. When I'm exposing Jamila, catch them exposing the lies. If you don't know what's going on, you can go log off. If you don't know who Jamila is, log off of this live and go look at one of the old lives. And you will see it. Because I got over 1,800 lives talking about Jamila. I've been exposing Jamila for two years, six months. But unfortunately, this live is not an exposing live. This live is not an exposing live. This is a ministry live. Galatians 6 2. Carry each other's burden. And in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Let me say this. Y'all know that I am spirit led to be spirit fed. Yes, you do, sis. 713. 449-1883 is the new ministry number, sister. Heartstring, 713-449-1883 is the new number. I would love to hear from you, sis. You got to call me or text me. Let me know what's going on. Let me know you all right. Let's catch up because you know it's been a minute, sis. I love you, sis, and I miss you, but let's keep in touch. Let's keep in touch. We as believers... We as True Circle Love team players, we were never meant to do life by ourselves. God did not intend for neither one of us to do life alone. This is wisdom what I am giving y'all. And the reason why I'm saying this, just like God got us doing ministry together, because we were never, we was not created to be loners. God did not create us. For us to live life alone. We need the love and care of others. Just as much as we are needed by others in the same way. The love that we go out there and give to those people. The homeless people all over the world. We need that same love to be returned to us. This is why when I see somebody struggling. Under the weight of their burden. I offer my time. I offer resources and I pray their strength in the Lord. I might can't give nobody no money every time they are struggling. 
But I can talk to them on the phone. I can give them some resources. I can pray they strength in the Lord. And that is a blessing within itself. Monetary, giving people money, doing this, buying them that. That is not the only way that we can bless somebody that's struggling. Sometimes people just need a shoulder to lean on. Sometimes people just need an ear to listen to what they say. Time, resources, and prayer is a bigger blessing than anything that you can give somebody materialistically or financially. And this is how we do ministry like Christ-like. In order for us to do ministry Christ-like, it ain't all about money. It's all about time. It's all about giving them the resources. It's all about sitting there, give, sending up a prayer, a fervent prayer. This is how you do ministry Christ-like. And over here in the true circle of love, we do ministry the way that Christ did ministry. This is how God orchestrated it and ordained it to happen. This is why we travel all over the world. This is why we go into different homeless communities. Just like deep Jesus did. Jesus walked the four corners of the earth. We was made to worship. We was made to praise. We was made to serve. And that's a whole shirt right there in the making. We was made to worship, praise, and serve. True circle of love was made to worship, praise, and serve. Hebrews 6.10 Hebrews 16. Hebrews 16 says this. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. All of these scripture references it replies and it relates to what the true circle of love is doing. This is why God got me here doing this. Hebrews 16. Hebrews 16. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work. And the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Why am I talking about that? Because true circle of love is going out to do the work. And I am here to tell you that if you are a team player, if you are an active team player, you pay a $20 due, God will not forget your work. And he loves that we show him as we help the people all over the world and we continue to help the people. God is not going to forget about the work and the love that us as Truth Circle of Love team players has shown all over the world by helping his people and continuing to help his people. Did y'all know? Did y'all know that us continually serving the homeless worldwide is a form of expressing our faith in and to God. The, what we do out there, y'all, this is a way, this is a form of expressing our faith in God as well as to God. Us going out there doing what God tells us to do, let's do ministry in, in, in Baltimore. Us going out there, that is expressing to God our faith in him as well as to him. We cannot grow weary while we are out there serving. But even if one of us do grow weary, we can be re-energized in our commitment by knowing, not thinking, I said knowing that he sees us and he will not forget it. The scripture reference says he is, God is not unjust. He will never forget the work that we have done. He will never forget it. 
He will never forget the work that we have done. He will never forget the love that we have shown. And he will never forget the way that we have served his people and continue to serve his people worldwide. This is how you do true ministry. This is how you do ministry the way that Christ did it. True circle of love is doing ministry in a Christ-like manner. This is a Christ-like ministry. Amen. Romans 12, 13. Romans 12, 13. Romans 12, 13 tells us this. It says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. Why am I talking about this scripture? We're going out there to get hope. We are being patient in our tribulation. We are constantly praying. But we are seeking to show hospitality to every homeless person that we come in contact with. Hey, Christine, we are seeking to show hospitality. When we go out there, we are seeking to show hospitality. Kobe, be quiet unless you want to go in the room, Dad. Hold on, yeah, let me put him in the room because he's whining. You want to go in the room? You must have. When true circle of love, when we are out there serving the homeless, we have to practice hospitality. We have to practice hospitality. We have to pray. We not only have to have compassion. We not only have to have kindness. We don't only have to show love. We got to show compassion. We got to show kindness. We got to show love. But we all have to also show hospitality. When serving the homeless, we have to practice hospitality. But hospitality can look a lot of different ways these days. Hospitality can look a whole bunch of different ways. And I have two analogies here, and one of them is my testimony. I'm here with my testimonies today, and this is how the Holy Spirit told me to come. I'm, I'm spirit-led to be spirit-fed, and I'm sharing my truths. My truths. These are my testimonies of what I have lived and what I have went through and how God has elevated me to be where I'm at so that we can all be serving in this ministry, True Circle of Love Worldwide Street Ministry. This is the different type. I'm going to give y'all a couple of different type of hospitalities. Just say if you know a family member. You know a family member. And everywhere we go, the earth is our turf. Everywhere we roam is home. That means that everywhere we go, when we are in the presence of these homeless people, no matter what they look like, smell like, what they're doing, they are family. It's the blood of Jesus that makes us kin. Just like in this ministry, we are all family, sisters and brothers, mother, aunts. Because it is the blood of Jesus that makes us kin. If you know a family member is struggling to make ends meet. If you are a true child of God doing what God has called us to do. You will show hospitality by inviting them over for dinner. That is one thing you can do. If you know your cousin, she got three, four kids. She ain't got no food. She ain't got no job. She's struggling. They struggling. They ain't got nothing to eat. It's two things that you can do to show hospitality. Either you can cook a big old dinner and you can invite your cousin and her kids over so they can eat. Or better yet, you can go buy some groceries and take them to her and let her prepare the meal so that her and her children can eat. Hospitality. God calls for us to help those that are in need. Despite of what they look like. Despite of what they smell like. Despite of what they doing. If they doing drugs. That ain't got nothing to do with us. We are not going to block our blessings. Because we go into a city or a state. And we see somebody doing drugs. And I'm like oh no he doing drugs. I'm not going to give him a bag. The devil is dead. We are supposed to help everybody in need. Not who we pick choose to pick and choose for. I got a saying, we cannot pick and choose who we pray for. We cannot pick and choose who we help. 
That's double-minded and unstable. If you got to pick and choose, oh, I don't want to pray for them because they made me mad. You double-minded and unstable. If you don't want, oh, I don't want to um give him, I ain't giving him nothing. I'm going to take my $5 and give it to somebody else because he over there smoking crack. That's double-minded and unstable. We are supposed to show hospitality to all people. No matter what they look like, no matter what their gender, e gender is, no matter what their nationality is, no matter what. When you are a child of God, you are walking like Christ. Christ did not pick and choose who he wanted to pray for. He didn't pick and choose who he wanted to feed. He fed them all. He healed as many as he could. Whoever he came in contact, if they needed to be healed, he healed them. He didn't say, oh, he laying on the ground, he, he dirty, got souls all over him. He didn't say none of that. He did what he was supposed to do. He helped them. And that's how we are supposed to be doing. This is why this ministry, Truth Circle of Love, this is a Christ-like ministry. This is how we do ministry. This is how we serve. Earth is our turf. Everywhere we roam is our home. That makes everywhere we go, if that's our home, that's our family. If that's our home, that's our family. The blood of Jesus makes us kin. Everybody in the world is kin through the blood of Jesus that he shed on the cross. Compassion is a must in a true circle of love. Kindness is a must in a true circle of love. Love is a must in a true circle of love. Hospitality is a must. In this ministry, the true circle of love. We're going to do ministry like Christ did ministry. Until God say we're not doing ministry no more. As long as God have us traveling from city to state, we are going to do it the way that Christ did it. It's no other way that we can do it. True circle of love does this because anyone that we come in contact with is family. The blood of Jesus makes us kin, y'all. That's another shirt right there. I wrote these notes and on the side I put. Made, true circle of love is made to worship, praise, and serve. That's a shirt coming soon. The blood of Jesus makes us all kin. True circle of love, the blood of Jesus makes us all kin. That's another shirt that's coming soon. Because as I was writing these notes and the Holy Spirit was giving me these words, and I looked, these are shirts. Do you know a single person? And this is my testimony. I have to tell y'all my testimony. I am talking about hospitality. Just say that you know a single person that is in need of a place to stay. Just say you know a person. You don't have to know this person physically. Like just know them, know them. You know of this person. This single person is in need of a place to stay. And you either have a spare room. My case, I didn't have a spare room. I had my living room because I'm going to tell my testimony. And I done told it before. If you know a single person that is in need of a place to stay and you have an extra room or you have a living room, you don't have no children, we are supposed to open our door and offer the spare room to them or even offer your couch. In the living room. We are supposed to help these people. Until they are able to get on their feet. I sit here before y'all. And tell y'all this is my segment of the message. I have always been the one. I don't care who it is. Friends. Strangers. I don't care. If God put me in the path of somebody. That needed a place to stay. I would open my door up to those people. I have let many and many and many and many people come into my house and live. So this is my segment of the message. This part of my calling started at a very early age. Me allowing people to come sleep in the room, sleep on the couch, sleep on the floor. You can come with your kids. I was always the one to open the door. I remember I was standing in the apartments and this girl that I called friend, she had two children. The people put her out the apartment. I almost lost my apartment because they kicked her out of the apartment in the same apartments that I was staying. And I opened my door for her to come now. And the manager now was knocking on my door. But God ain't let me get put out because it was the deed that I was doing that God had told me to do. 
I have done this so many times. I have even been messed over by allowing people to come up in my house. I didn't have people steal from me. I didn't have people tear up my stuff. But it still did not stop me from opening up my door. Because one thing I know, two things for sure. Everybody is not the same. I could not deny one person from coming sleeping on my couch because I let somebody come sleep on my couch two weeks ago and they stole my money and they stole food and they stole this and they stole that because everybody I am not going to stop this person because this person did me wrong I trust God the last time that I did this and I told y'all I was up under the leadership of Jamila and I'm mentioning Jamila name and just because I'm mentioning it don't mean for y'all to put it up in the comments I was up under the leadership of Jamila. This is my testimony. I told y'all about this testimony. My spiritual sister, Emma. I met Emma through being up under the leadership of Jamila. I actually met Emma in person without talking to her at a book discussion in Louisiana. This is my testimony. My spiritual sister, Emma, in 2019, she was going through something with the guy that she was dating who is now her husband to God be the glory because God allowed me to minister to her and the guy that she was dating at the time. And when she left my house, after I was ministering to them, they got married to God be the glory. And I don't get the credit for it, but I did. The Holy Spirit allowed me to sit there and minister to them. She came from Louisiana to come to my house and stay. He came to my house because he came to see her. They both stayed in my house, slept on the couch. Not her, but her and her man. Emma came to stay with me during the time of need. Her and her boyfriend at the time, they had got into it. I didn't know Emma. I just knew Emma through seeing her at the book discussion. And she sent me, we got to be friends on Facebook. And we just started talking. I didn't know Emma personally. I had never spoken to Emma. I had never really spoken to Emma. I seen Emma in person at a book discussion, I came back. Jamila said, get with Roshana to be your prayer partner. Jamila said, get with Roshana to be your accountability partner. And this is what drew all the people near me. Emma was one of the ones that became my prayer partner. A whole bunch of them did. And God know this is true. But soon as Emma called me that night. And she told me her circumstances. About she was put out. The man, her boyfriend at the time had called the police and that she had gathered up a couple of things and she was walking and she was fixed to hitchhike and try to get back to her hometown, which is Ohio. She was in Louisiana. She called me off of a tablet and said that she was walking. It was dark. She was walking and she was finna hitchhike so that she could get her a ride to back to Ohio where her family was at. As soon as Emma called me, the Holy Spirit started speaking to me. And the Holy Spirit started not only speaking, but guiding. The Holy Spirit was saying, do this. Tell her to get to the bus station in Baton Rouge. Tell her to go to the thing and tell the people that she don't have no money, but she on the phone with somebody that is going to pay for the bus ticket. The Holy Spirit started guiding me on what to do, what to say to her, how to do it, how to get it done. All I needed her to do was get to the Greyhound bus station in Louisiana so that she can get to Texas. She got to the bus station in Louisiana. She called me on that tablet. She went to the desk. We had to figure it out how I could do it. To get the money because she didn't have the physical money. But God moved and God worked and it happened. I purchased her a ticket from Louisiana to come to Texas. Because God told me to open the door and extend my hospitality and allow Emma to come stay with me. I didn't know Emma from Adam from Eve. When she got to Houston, guess what? I was there to pick her up. It was like I had been knowing this lady all my life. And I just had met her to where we talked. I seen her. I laid eyes on her in Louisiana. But we didn't have no conversation. We started talking after Jamila said, get with Roshana. 
my ride or die if you need a prayer partner. Get with Roshana if you need a, 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 a um, accountability partner. This is why Jamila slipped and said my name because she was talking about the same thing, accountability partner, to God be the glory. I didn't know Emma. I didn't know nothing about Emma. All I know is Emma called me and said that the police had came and put her out and she was finna hitchhike to get back to Ohio. And I allowed the Holy Spirit to guide and lead me on what to do. I was there to pick Emma up. I paid for the bus ticket. I picked her up and I brought her to my house. I was there for her in her time of need. But the spirit of God used me to be there. I was not there because I knew her and I just felt sorry for her. The spirit of God used me to be there. I didn't have much. I didn't have much. I didn't have no car. But guess what I did have? I had a roof over my head. And I welcomed Emma in by the Holy Spirit as well as myself. And when I speak about extreme compassion for people, this is what I mean. See, when I tell my testimonies, I have testimonies to show my compassion. Y'all sit there and hear Jamila sit there and say, oh, you think you finna come down here and move? You finna be in my house? You not finna do that. Jamila not even letting nobody come in her house to be a friend or be a, a pastor. I mean, to be a, of the congregation. So she, you know she not finna let nobody come up in there to live. This is what extreme compassion for people look like in real life. I love God. Therefore, I have to love all his people. Not the ones that I can pick and choose to love. That is not of God. If I got to pick and choose who I'm going to pray for, I am not led by the Spirit to do so. Because the Spirit is not going to lead you to pick and choose to pray for nobody. God wants us to pray for everybody. God wants us to love everybody. God wants us to help everybody. This is why I scream that ministry is in me and not on me because of the extreme compassion that I have for people and the things that I have did that the spirit has allowed me to do whom the spirit get the glory for. But my obedience to Christ is necessary. This is why I am so sincere about anything that I do. Ministry is in me. Not on me. And what I mean by that is. You cannot look at me. Or another person. And know how compassion. That person is. You cannot just look at a person. And know. Y'all don't know that I have a compassion for people. By just looking at me. Y'all know I have a compassion for people. By me opening my mouth. And what comes out of my mouth. Looking at me, y'all can't say I'm compassion because people looking at me, guess what they come on here and say? They say I'm mean. They say I'm crazy. They say I'm rude. They say I'm ugly. They say a whole bunch of stuff. So looking at me, you can't tell that I have a compassion for people. That's why I say ministry is in me and not on me. The compassion comes from within us. People look at us all the time. It ain't no telling what they might be assuming and thinking about you or thinking about me. What I know is, I know people look at me and think, oh, she got tattoos. She ruthless. Oh, she got a, a, a teardrop on her eye. She didn't kill somebody. I can only imagine the things that people say and assume about me. But ministry is in me, not on me. Because one thing I know, they can do all the thinking and assuming that they want to do. But when I open my mouth, and the Holy Spirit starts speaking and telling them about this beautiful, peculiar ministry that God has orchestrated and ordained. About this worldwide ministry and the mission to bring hope back to as many homeless people all over the world, from city to state. Every time I open my mouth, the response that I get out of people when I share the goodness of God in this ministry, 
Despite of what I look like on the outside, when I open my mouth and the Holy Spirit starts speaking, I get the same response out of people. And that response is this. I always get this response. Wow. I never heard of nobody traveling the world to do ministry and going into the homeless communities. Wow. We need more people like you in the world. Wow. That is the response. Now that same person that responded to me like that. They was just sitting there judging me based off of the tattoos, based off of the goals in my mouth, based off of the way that I talk, how loud I talk, because that's what they say. But as soon as I open my mouth and I allow the Holy Spirit to speak and share what the Holy Spirit has us doing, because it's we over me. And I tell them that I am a visionary leader of a worldwide ministry that makes blessing bags. And we go to different parts of the world, city to state, and there's other team players. And God has united me with people that I didn't know. Every time I go on an event, I'm meeting somebody that I didn't know in the physical form. I know y'all in the spirit, but I can't wait to meet y'all in the physical. And they say, wow, I never heard of such thing. God is going to bless you abundantly. We need more people like you in the world. That is the response that I get from people. And this is why I say ministry is in me. It's not on me. You can sit there by me and you can look at me and you can pass judgment and you can do all of that. But when I open my mouth, to God be the glory, Edward. But when I open my mouth, that is when you know who I really am. And what God has called me to do. Because as long as I don't open my mouth, they're going to say she gangster, she ratchet, she ghetto, she got goals in her mouth, she this, she that. You cannot judge a book by its cover. You have to open that book up and read it. If you just continue to look at that cover, you're going to be misled. But when you open that book and you start reading the chapters... You're going to understand what the book is about. Same with us. You would not never know who I am if I don't open my mouth. Y'all would not never know that I was bold until I started opening my mouth. Y'all would never know that my obedience was to Christ until I stayed here consistently and I was opening my mouth. Y'all would not know that I had compassion, love, and kindness for the people until y'all actually seen me out there interacting with the people and I opened my mouth. Ministry is not... On me is in me. Mama Dora said, True Circle of Love is one of a kind ministry. Mama Dora said, This is God's end time, last day ministry. True Circle of Love. And I am honored to lead it. But what I want y'all to know is, it's we over me. It's me over, it's we over me. It's we over me. It's we over me. I do not care about the little ugly comments that people come on here and say. One thing about me, I am confident in who I am. I don't have no low self-esteem. People can say whatever they want to say about me. They can say whatever they want to say. I don't live off of what people say about me. I know who I am in God, and I know who God is in me. I serve a big God. Can't nobody little the God in me. You can say whatever you want to say about me, but it's not going to bother me, not one bit. Because I walk in the boldness and the authority of God. And when you are a true being of God, you don't bar nothing. Y'all just see how I stopped that lady from coming in my house. That wasn't me. That was God. That is the boldness and the authority that God has given me to speak what the Spirit tell me to speak. When the Spirit tell me to speak. That's why I tell y'all, if you are over here following, if you are just a follower, I hope you're following the Christ in me. I hope you're following the Christ in me. I hope you're following the Christ in me. Because if you over here just to be following, then you're following for the wrong reason. Because I'm following Christ. And anybody that's a part of this ministry, y'all need to be following Christ too. Y'all need to be spirit-led to be spirit-fed. Y'all need to have compassion. Y'all need to have kindness. Y'all need to have love. Y'all need to show hospitality. Because one thing I know, two things for sure. As the leader... 
of the true circle of love, God is leading team players that have the same boldness that Roshana have. It's going to be obedient to God just like Roshana is. It's going to show love, compassion, and kindness to all people just like Roshana is. We are going to all be on one accord. In order for us to walk together, we have to, we got to be on one accord. This is why this ministry has a dress code. I refuse for us to be out there and just everybody have on different stuff. Nobody know who knows who. <laughs> Daughter, they did the same thing to Jesus. Pure sign, you are of God. To God be the glory. Anything that anybody say, I give the God glory back to God. I give it back, the credit back to the creator. You can come on here and say, oh, Roshana, your hair is pretty. Guess what my response is going to be? To God be the glory. All your tennis shoes are cute. To God be the glory. Then I say thank you. I say thank you after giving God the glory. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what 333 is. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what 333 is. But yes. So I just you know this is the news and the updates. Um, that's what I want to share. Let me share this. Um, Y'all know that we got two um, new faithful. I said it last week. We got two new team players that is attached to the elder of this ministry. That is in Goshen, um, Indiana to go out be the glory. And um, yesterday I went check the mail. And as y'all can see, those of y'all that can't see, this is on my post. And before I get off of here, I am going to read this. This is a $400 money order that is written out for the Baltimore trip. So those of y'all that follow the ministry, y'all know when we went into Indianapolis, Indiana, the anointing oil from this mantle, it flows from Texas to Indiana. When we went into Indianapolis, Indiana, I was able to meet Mama Doris as well as her sister, Inez. Sister Inez has joined the true circle of love as well as, as her brother. Her brother has joined the ministry too. And yesterday, I received her brother's first token of love, which was in the amount of $400. And it's on that um, money order. It says specifically for the Baltimore ministry. And this is a long post that I made. And this is a testimony. It was a testimony on Tuesday. And I'm going to share this with y'all. And what I said, long post, but it is testimony, testimony Monday for me. I said, I just received this in the mail from one of my ministry, new, one of the, one of my ministry, hold on. I just received this in the mail from one of my ministry newest members, a Caucasian man that joined from Indiana. His first token of love was 400, was a $400 money order. Never have I met him in person. God is in the true circle of love ministry Know that. I need y'all to know that. God is in this ministry. Because anytime that God has allowed me to get up here and not ask for one dollar and tokens of love is just coming in because the Holy Spirit is speaking to people on what amount to sin, that right there shows y'all that God is in this ministry. Don't nobody got to believe it. I know it to be true. Mama Doris know it to be true. And any of y'all that is experiencing blessings and blessings on top of blessings, y'all know it to be true too. I never met this man. He is a Caucasian man. Just like the elder, she is a Caucasian. Somebody came on here talking about, do you like white people? Y'all must don't know what my, who my spiritual mother is. This is what I said on this thing. I said, every day I wake up with the attitude of gratitude, and I do. Thanking the Most High God for the favor that he has placed on my life and my ministry, Truth Circle of Love Worldwide, that he ordained. I will never forget where I started. I will never break rank. I will remain humble because the oil that flows from the mantle that was passed for me from Indiana, that little Caucasian lady, Mama Doris, that God sent to be my spiritual covering as well as my spiritual mother, is a very anointed. This mantle is very anointed. I rejoice daily because I do not have to ask. I do not have to borrow. Nor do I have to beg from anyone. 
God has built a whole team to be a part and support the true circle of love without me having to say a word. When starting this true circle of love worldwide blessing bag ministry last year, the spirit said all active team players was to give a $20 due monthly that was mandatory each month to be a part of the worldwide blessing of blessing the homeless. Told me to say, the Holy Spirit told me to say on YouTube platform. To let the Holy Spirit lead them into giving tokens of love. The Spirit never told me to even speak about a tithe, an offering, a special offering, or a donation, sowing seeds, or etc. Because that is asking people to give. I thank God daily for every person all around the world that God has chosen to be a team player, supporter of True Circle of Love. We are glowing and growing in God every second of the day. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for allowing me to see the manifested evidence of everything you spoke to me concerning Truth Circle of Love ministry. I am honored to be the leader as well as to be able to do the work that you have called the Truth Circle of Love to do worldwide. On another note, those that know you and know what you have been doing in the kingdom of God, they are the ones that we would expect to support us, but they don't. But God, God will line it up to where total strangers from all parts of the world who only know you through the spirit will bless you. I am a living witness. I am rejoicing, not bragging. Please do not get this twisted. I am rejoicing, not black bragging. It is all God. I am just the vessel that he is using to bring hope back to the homeless communities worldwide with a whole true circle of love team to help. God gets all the glory and the credit goes back to the creator. This is just the beginning. God is going to do it big in true circle of love ministry. This blessing is for the upcoming event. Be more careful. True circle of love couples doing ministry in Baltimore. I shared this testimony. Because when I went to my mailbox yesterday, of course I knew that it was coming. I knew that it was coming. I was on the lookout for it. But for me to open the mail and to actually see that somebody that had recently joined the ministry that I have never met and they first token of love was $400, I couldn't do nothing but thank God, rejoice, and be glad in what God is doing. Because I didn't have to ask for $1, but God allowed him to send $400. And this is what you know, the hand, this is how you know the hand of God is on this ministry. This is how you know the hand of God is on this ministry. The way that it even happened, he came to Mama Doris and gave Mama Doris the $400 money order and told Mama Doris, here, get this to your friend. I want to be in on the, get this to your friend. Mama Doris say, I don't have no friends. He said, you know the lady that you always talk about, Mama Doris, oh, you talk about my spiritual daughter? Yes, I want to get in on the ministry. He even wants to travel and be an active servant in the ministry. Nobody but God can do that. Nobody but God can do that. I don't sit before y'all boasting and bragging. I sit before y'all rejoicing and basking in the goodness of God. Me and Chinese did it by ourselves. So I know that it could be done. But I thank God daily for each and every one of y'all that he has handpicked to be a part of this ministry. God handpicked y'all. And I rejoice in that because he gave me the vision. But he also has provided the provision. And that's a blessing all in itself. We thank God for the blessings that come in. But we also thank God for the blessings that goes out. To God be the glory. This is the true circle of love weekly news and update. Y'all, let's get prepared to do ministry. I am looking forward to doing 130 bags in Baltimore. 130 bags in Baltimore is my target. So that we can walk away from Baltimore with 100 
Right now we are at 1,103. Am I right? What we at now? What number am we are at now? How many blessing bags we at? Nobody but God. 1,000. Oh, 1,000, 1,003 blessing bags. When we come back from Baltimore, we will be at 1,133 blessing bags. We will be going into Philly with 1,000, I mean, being there served 1,133. We are at 1,003. 1,003 right now. I said, one, I think I said 1,103. We ain't at that yet. 1,003. Nobody but go a child. I pray that, you know what I'm saying, if you, those of y'all, y'all already know, we are in the month of April. April, True Circle of Love, Team Player Dues is due. However you have to do it, like I said, if it's $20 for 20 days, $5 a week, $10 every two weeks, $20 at one time, or even if you want to pay up. All of the dues is active. Thank you, sis. No, that's not where we at, sis. We're not that. Take the 100 off. We had just 1,003. We left Philadelphia. I mean, we left Indianapolis, Indiana at 1,003. 1,003 blessing bags. When we come back from Baltimore, we'll be at 1,133. That's why I'm trying to do 133. So, Michael, we are at 1,003 right now. That was my bad. I said 1,103. But I was thinking about when we come back. So that's my bad, y'all. But yes, y'all. So just allow the Holy Spirit to speak to y'all. Like I said, it's the tokens of love and the dues that make it possible for us to do these things, to be able to have everything lined up and in order. And go out against the glory. The credit goes back to the Creator. Allow the Spirit to speak to you concerning tokens of love because we don't have enough team players for us to do what we do just off the dues, y'all. That's why I thank God for allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to those. And those of y'all that know that that give token of love, y'all know who y'all is. I don't have to separate nobody. I don't have to call nobody out. But it's truly the tokens of love that makes it really possible. And if, it, if all of us can just give a little, led by the Spirit, nobody has to give a lot. Yeah, that's what we had. 1,003, sis, in Indianapolis. That's what we ended with. So we are right now at 1,003. When we go into Baltimore on um, the 2nd through the 6th, and when we come back, it'll be 1,133 because our target for Baltimore is 130. So allow the Spirit to speak to y'all. Like I said, we have it all. I just want everybody, we will be going into April so we will be going into eight. I mean, we will be going into May. So we will be there at the beginning of May. And I know that some people um, will be start paying their dues then. But those dues that come when I'm there in Baltimore, I will not be using them. I will be using all of May dues and tokens of love will be for Philadelphia, Philadelphia. I want to give a special shout out because I noticed that. When I get to these places, no matter what city, no matter what state I am in, those of y'all, and you're not going to know if I'm talking to you, those of y'all that wait till I get to the state or in the city and y'all give y'all token of love right before um, we are getting ready to do the ministry, I want to send a special shout out to y'all because that makes up for when we go in the store and we might be lacking just a little, those tokens of love that come when we are actually there getting ready to do it, those tokens of love truly bless us in a time of need because I have been in some states where we was like bothered, like we ain't going to have enough for this and we ain't going to have enough for that. And then boom, they go on the cash app, the Zelle or the child and go out and spoke to somebody and told them, okay, they down there right now and y'all send it right there. Those are special tokens of love when they come when we are actually there because guess what i know that the holy spirit is speaking to those people right there because we are in preparation of getting ready to go out and do it and the tokens of love come right in time so 
That is why the monthly dues, the monthly dues, these months right here, April monthly dues and April tokens of love goes for the ministry that we're going to do in Baltimore in May. The dues, May dues and May tokens of love goes for the following months of June when we're going to be in Philadelphia. So I just thank God, like I said, the tokens of love, it pays for the flights, it pays for where we um, house it, it pays for the food, it pays for everything. Like when we was in Baltimore, the Holy Spirit had me and Sister Audra running upstairs to give these people cash. The Spirit spoke to both of us. So it's, you, we, we are led by the Spirit. We never know what's going to happen. We might be just like when I went um, to Miami. I went to um, Fort Lauderdale to get my hair done. But as I was getting my hair done, it was a, a homeless boy, a 23-year-old homeless boy, Mark, that, that didn't have on no shoes. And his feet was black and the Holy Spirit said, y'all going to buy shoes. So I, we never know what's going to happen. That's why I say it's the tokens of love is what makes this stuff possible. We was able to spend $130 outside of the blessing bags. We still did the blessing bags and we did bought them some shoes too. Those last minute blessings are supernatural blessings from God. It comes right in time. So we are doing what God has called us to do. Like I said, then I told y'all, once the exposing assignment is over, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me that when I go into these cities, we are going to be having meeting greets. I am going to be meeting with people. Just say if I go into Atlanta and it's people that's following that ain't a part, those people that want to meet, we are going to be doing little meeting greets. Different little things going to happen. I told y'all um, the release, redirect, rescue, that is going to be a yearly revival for the true circle of love. The armor of God ain't no stopping us now. That is going to be a yearly conference. So it's a lot of things that's going to be taking place. You know what I'm saying? At one point in time, we flying now. At one, at, we're going to come to a point to where we are no longer going to be flying. We are going to either be in a splinter or an RV and we're going to be pulling up and we're going to be hitting. We're going to be pulling up in a state and we're going to be hitting several cities instead of one city. So I'm, I'm just I'm just giving y'all an outlook of what God is showing me, the, the vision that God is showing me and Mama Doris. So y'all get ready because God is doing big things, but it's going to expand and it's going to even get bigger. And this is why the Holy Spirit is saying you have, if you are a team player, you have, because God is going to put team players. Some of y'all, I don't know who it is. When we get this RV and go and take it on the road like that, some of it's going to, I ain't going to be the only one. We're going to have to have a driver. I'm going to have to have several other people because we're going to be putting blessings in the bag together in the RV. So this is what it's going to be like. True Circle Love is on tour, going out in the world, giving our blessing bags. This is this is a peculiar ministry. God is giving us visions no, like no other. Nobody's going to be able to come and say, oh, well, we did ministry like True Circle of Love. No, True Circle of Love did ministry like Jesus did. And that is the glory of it all. And that's what we all should be rejoicing in. And I thank God for each and every one of y'all because God knew that I couldn't do this by myself. God know that me and Chinese couldn't do the world. He let us do, he let me and Chinese do downtown Houston for five years, not missing a beat. I got the blueprint. God already gave me the blueprint to it, y'all. God already gave me the blueprint to this ministry and what this ministry is going. This ministry is going to be helping single mothers, putting them in. I told y'all my vision, a whole old hotel with up three or four hundred rooms that we are going to be able to house people. The vision is big, but our God is bigger and he is going to allow us the everything that's supposed to happen. In this ministry is going to manifest on God's timing. We are still in the beginning of this ministry. And if you can't endure this, you're not going to be able to endure what God got in store for us. This is just the beginning. God is preparing each and every one of us for the position that he's going to have us in when it go to the next level. But you got to be ready. This is why I said allow the Holy Spirit to speak to y'all. <laughs> My niece said, this is glorious. I'm excited about what God is doing. To God be the glory. I am too. 
It is big. It's bigger than what I can tell y'all. If y'all can see the blueprint, if y'all can see the vision between with, with the spiritual eyes that I got. See? 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 God out the spirit already speaking to my twin. She said, I think God is preparing me to drive, twin. That's what I do for a living now. See? And we all going to be in a position. We are not going to have to want for nothing. Nobody. It's going to be a core team. Everybody is not going to be able to travel. But God is building a core team. This is why he is allowing me to go into these different cities, into these different states, and meet these different team players. Because God is building a core team. See? She a long haul driver. See? That's manifested evidence right there. And I didn't even know that till today. And that's my twin. This is why God is allowing me to come and meet y'all individually. Because he know he is getting the core team together. He is getting the core team together. Because when we get this RV that's going to be wrapped with true circle of love, worldwide blessing bag ministry, and we're going to have blessing bags all on it, we are going to have an RV that's going to be wrapped with the ministry name. We are going to need a core. We're going to be on tour. Like mama said, we're going to be working off season. In the places where it's snowing at, we're going to do them in the summer. This is going to be, it's going to be seasonal. Like Mama Dora say, we are going to be on seasonal tours. We are going to be on seasonal tours. Up there where it's snowing at, Indianapolis, Indiana and all of those, and all of that, Michigan and all of that. We going to do those in the summer months. In, in, in the months, in, in, in the cities, in the states where it don't snow at, we're going to do them in the winter. See, God already got it all mapped out. I can see the blueprint. He gave me the vision. I am the visionary leader of the true circle of love. And God has given me the vision. And I know that everything that God has shown me, I know. I know that it's going to manifest. You know why? Because he spoke the same thing that he just spoke to me. He spoke it to Mama Doris. And when Mama Doris started speaking to me, I said, that's confirmation. That's confirmation. I received that. That's confirmation. Because God had already showed me certain things before I even knew Mama Doris. And that tour, a splinter or RV, God had already showed me that before Mama Doris even said it to me. When she said it, it confirmed with my spirit. And this is how you know that our spirits are divinely connected. I will say this in closing. I had to go to Indianapolis, Indiana to meet Mama Doris in person. I had to hug on her and I had to love on her. And the reason why I say that is because more team players have joined since then. And more, we are receiving more manifested evidence on everything. The numbers. On the YouTube, they going up. Why? Because I went to meet Mama Doris to the person that sent this mantle. We had to connect physically. We was already connected spiritually. But God had to connect us spiritually. Because now, with the mantle being here, he came from Indiana, but it's here now. The anointing oil on this ministry it flows from texas to goshen indiana to indianapolis indiana and to every city and every state that there is a true circle of love team player in every city and state that a team player of talking a team player of true circle of love reside in the anointing oil from this mantle it flows from texas to Goshen, Indiana, to Indianapolis, Indiana, and all around the world where each and every one of you are at that is an active team player. The anointing oil on this ministry, it is very anointed. And I had to meet Mama Doris for things to start going the way that God wanted it to go. Since I came back from Indianapolis, Indiana, 
we didn't got almost a thousand subscribers. Pay attention. The numbers on the YouTube went up. More tokens of love is coming in. People is coming with testimonies about being healed. We just heard Sister Sabrina. I can't make it up. This is why I don't walk around and say I am this title. I just speak it. I let it manifest. I work and I let the work speak for itself. And that's what we do over here in this ministry. Truth Circle of Love. Let's do ministry in Baltimore. Truth Circle of Love. Be more careful. Couples doing ministry in Baltimore, Maryland. Let's do ministry. We will be in Baltimore, Maryland, May the 2nd through the 6th. In May the 2nd through the 6th, we will be in Baltimore. June the 6th through the 10th, we, True Circle of Love, will be doing ministry in Philadelphia. God has already spoken to me concerning how to do ministry based off of what the Spirit is showing me about when we go into Philadelphia. Sister Fredrina said they have different sets of homeless people. And we are trying to reach all the people. Somebody came and said go to Kingsland. I learned today that Kingsland State they showed me some things. Kingsland is a community of heavy drug dealers. I mean heavy drug users. And God is already speaking wisdom. God is already speaking wisdom. And the wisdom that God is speaking to me, saying, when we go down into that area where they are heavy drug users, the true circle of love team players that will be active, we are to have on gloves, plastic gloves. We are to have on masks. And we are to have sanitizer. We are to have sanitizer on hand. I don't care what it is. We are going to do what thus says the Lord. The man that Jesus healed with leprosy, he had souls all over his body. body. Kingston in Philadelphia. True circle of love, that's our first stop. And God has told me how to do it already. I am spirit. We don't fear nothing. We got somebody in the comments saying it's poisoned. God has already had me over here doing my homework. And this is why God is telling me how to do it. True circle of love, the earth is our turf. Everywhere we roam is home. I have seen some things. And I can't show y'all because I'm on this phone. But I have seen some things. They got this drug that's called track. And it is a flesh-eating drug. It eats their flesh. And this is why the Holy Spirit said that I have, we have to go out there with gloves. The Bible says use wisdom. Just because those people are down there and they living like that don't mean that we can't, we don't have to go to them. That will be our first stop. But we will be using gloves. We will have on masks. And we will have on hand sanitizers. That little part right there. We might not get too many pictures. I don't know. This is what the spirit is telling me. We might not get too much footage. In that area. Okay. This person on here said, I was hooked on fentanyl for 12 years. The fentanyl is cut with trank. And that's, so that's, um, I don't know how to say your name. So I seen a guy, they say that he is shooting up, but all of this is flesh eating. So all of this, y'all, you can see nothing but flesh. Is that what it costs? I'm talking to the person, a tallow. Is that what it, is that what it costs? Because I seen some people, I seen two or three people and it's like, you can see they flesh. But they say they are trank or trank or something. 
This is the drug that they supposed to be shooting. But this is where they at in Kingsland, Philadelphia. Okay, right to the bone. Okay, that's what I seen some pictures. And that's why, wow, I watched the Dr. Remy on that area last night. Wow. And I been and I I somebody sent it to me today. So yeah, that's why the Holy Spirit telling me about the gloves and all of that. But we still not gonna overlook them, y'all, because they are already being overlooked. They are already being overlooked. So guess what? True circle of love, worldwide blessing bag ministry, we will not overlook them. It happens with a bunch of different drugs when using needles. Okay. So I know that I read up on it. It says something about Trank. It's a drug called Trank. But we definitely going there. That's going to be our first stop. And we're going to be suited and booted. In, in the attire that God want us to be in. And, and that's just that. So I'm just letting y'all know. June the 6th through the 10th. We will be in Philly. May the 2nd through the 6th. We will be in Baltimore. Baltimore has the spirit of addiction too. But we went out there. And that's why we're going. We're going to bring hope to these places that has the spirit of addiction. I am a recovering heroin addict. I had lots of friends that looked like that in active addiction. It's an animal sedative. It causes the veins to constrict. The blood doesn't get to the extremities. That's why you see all the wounds, even if someone snort it, they will lose flesh. Wow. Well, we're going to be at the throne on behalf of those people. And I'm like I said, we go in the spirit of God. So we, we walk in oneness with God and we don't go nowhere and the Holy Spirit is not there. So we, we, we good on that. So we definitely go in there, y'all. It's just going to be, it's just going to look different because we're going to have to be suited different. We are currently, when I got on this live, y'all, we was at 2,503 people. We have gained 55 subscribers right while I've been on this live talking about ministry. To God be the glory, y'all. To God be the glory. Can somebody, can one of the moderators, please, oh, there you go. I'm going to put it. That's okay. I'm going to uh, what you call it. I don't need it. Yeah, I just pinned um, the cash app, the Zelle, the Chime, and all of that for y'all to pay y'all $20 dues. And if the spirits speak to y'all concerning tokens of love, it is pinned on the thing. But yes, we just gained 55 souls because I call the subscribers souls. And it's saying right now that we didn't got 779 new subscribers in the last 28 days. I haven't even went looked at the recap, and I'm going to look at it right now since we on here. Because I know um, I probably have to wait till I get off because it says uh, your hard work. Let me, I don't want to show y'all that. Your hard work paid off. Publishing more helped your channel get 530 one percent more views than usual your chain your channel got 138,179 views more than the 1900 through the 33,000 the 19,000 through the 33,000 that it usually gets in 28 um days we are currently at um 2,559 so if one person um came back and said something after that so we are moving on up. Welcome our new subscribers, our new viewers. Look at God. Yes. So yeah, y'all. We 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 are doing it big. And I am about to put it in the ministry. If you um the twenty dollars is to make you an active team player on the blessings. We go and travel the world and feed the homeless communities. And everybody that is an active team player, they give they twenty dollar due. And it goes to help buy the things that we go out and bless the homeless people with. That's what the $20 um, do, the mandatory do. That is for all people that wants in on the blessing. If you want to be a blessing 
into this ministry to say that, oh yes, I am a part of this ministry that goes out and bless the world. The algorithms are moving. I can't wait to see what my weekly recap is. I think last week I had 21,000 point six hundred or something and i know it's definitely going to be bigger than that this time but i'm going to get ready to post it in a minute because i woke up to it i just hadn't looked at it yet let the holy spirit oh wow he said amen i don't know how i found this lol i am a white boy for toronto oh to god be the glory to god be the glory but yeah, y'all, so that's what it is. Like I said, it's a $20 due if you want to be an active. If you sitting over there and you are a child of God and the Spirit is speaking to you like, yes, I want to help homeless people. I want to be a part of this. Giving a $20 due a month makes you an active team player so that when you when we come back from all of these different states and cities and you see and you can sit back and you can say, oh, wow. My $20 was able to help them do what they did out there to feed the homeless. It's a blessing to be a blessing. And this is why we thank God for the blessings that come in as well as the blessings that goes out. Truth circle of love. The earth is our turf. Everywhere we roam is home. Ministry is in us, not on us. So if you're looking for it on the outside of us, you will never find it. You have to wait till we open our mouth and start speaking about this peculiar, God-ordained, God-orchestrated ministry. But right now, as of right now, in the last eight months, we have given out 1,003 blessing bags. Eight different states, nine different cities. To God be the glory. The credit goes back to the creator. I don't know, y'all, but if... um. To God be the glory. We don't worry about numbers over here. We don't worry about numbers over here. See, that's y'all problem. We don't worry about numbers. <laughs> we don't worry about numbers. We're not worried about numbers over here. <laughs> we do the work. We're not worried about how many people is on here. I'm breaking live whether it's one person on here. To God be the glory. Valerie. <laughs> God is going to continue to bless me because I am a blessing worldwide. <laughs> I pray that God bless you, Gloria. I mean, Valerie. I pray that God bless you, Valerie. Since you come over here talking about his 30-something 30, 30 views. We're not worried about the views, baby. We got supporters worldwide that is a part of this ministry. To God be the glory. And I pray that God bless you abundantly. Thank you and God bless. <laughs> Like I said, y'all, I love all of y'all with the love of Christ. That's one thing about it. That's what's wrong with the people in the world. They feel as though if you don't have a whole bunch of views on here and you don't have a whole bunch of that, that you lacking in some area. This I am spirit-led to be spirit-fed. I'm not worried about no numbers. I don't care about no numbers, baby. I don't care if it's one person on here. I'm going to still be doing the same thing because I'm going to do what thus says the Lord. <laughs> I know it ain't nothing but a whole bunch of followers over here anyway, but God is sending the supporters. True Circle of Love have worldwide supporters, and that's why we are able to travel and do ministry the way that God has called us to do ministry. I'm not worried about nobody. I give God the glory. Because if you come over here speaking negative about something that God is doing positive, then that speaks a lot about you. Hello, Mr. Jeff. Welcome to the um, chat. This is a worldwide blessing bag ministry that caters and serves homeless communities all over the world. All over the world. I am abundantly blessed already, Valerie. But thank you. I am already abundantly blessed. Every time I wake up, I'm abundantly breath. When I wake up and take the first breath, that means that I am abundantly breath. I am abundantly blessed when I take my first breath every day. I love you too, twin. I love all of y'all. I'm supposed to get up off of here. But those of y'all, obedience is God, is to God. Spirit led to be spirit fed. That's right. Y'all, I don't just know, but I'm going to give y'all a fair warning. Those of y'all that know about Michelle Chappelle, y'all know that it's $3 at the door. Michelle Chappelle is the God ordained comedian that comes to expose what is not of God. 
So I don't know if Michelle Chappelle will be making an entrance tonight with word on the street. But if she do, to come into that live chat, it is $3 at the door. Michelle Chappelle comes in and it's entertainment purposes only. It is comedian. This is a comedian show, Michelle Chappelle. Okay. Okay, um, Miss Tina. She said that's Tina. Her name is Tina. Okay, welcome to the live chat, Miss Tina. God bless you and your husband, Jeff. But um, like I said, I don't know for sure. But I'm 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 kind of thinking that the Holy Spirit gonna let Michelle Chappelle come in and do a show tonight. And the title of that show tonight would be Word on the Street. Because like I told y'all last night, I received a call. Those of y'all that know, it's $3 at the door. $3 to get in the show. If you come in and you don't give the $3, you a thief. That means that you just stole. So, I don't know, but I will let y'all know ahead of time by posting on the page or uh, putting the stuff up there. But I don't know. But I feel like the Spirit is going to lead Michelle Chappelle to come in and do a show. Y'all ain't seen Michelle Chappelle in a minute. And I know y'all love Michelle Chappelle. People been asking for Michelle Chappelle. People was on the live yesterday saying that they got their VIP ticket ready. They finna purchase their VIP ticket. So I am feel I'm I'm feeling led that that Michelle Chappelle is gonna um show up and show out tonight. So those of y'all that be ready, if she do, y'all already know what time she come on between six and seven this evening. So I don't know. Michelle Chappelle might be making a grand interest, but you just you just got to stay tuned. That's why I tell y'all to um, not only subscribe, hit the bell, set your notification. Because at one point in time, I'm going to stop sending out invites. Because the numbers is going up and the Holy Spirit is going to allow me to stop sending out invites. And if you have your notification set, that means the bell going to go off when I'm getting ready to come on and you will be able to get here. You won't be late. You won't miss nothing. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. If y'all know about Michelle Chappelle, friend. Friend, friend, my husband Jeff isn't here. I'm resting and watching. We have been in ministry full time since 1996 and been in ministry since 19. I was only 17 years old. My husband Jeff was 20 then. Oh, to God be the glory. Those of y'all that know Michelle Chappelle, you want to be there. You want to be waiting with your popcorn and, and, your, and your drink. When Michelle Chappelle come on. I am here to tell y'all. When Michelle Chappelle come. You don't want to miss none of it. You want to be at the show before it, the door open. And you want to be there the whole time. Because Michelle Chappelle is funny. She is hilarious. She is comical. But guess what? She going to get up there. And she going to speak the truth. She going to speak the truth. So if y'all. I'm saying. I don't know just yet. I will um, let y'all know. But I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure that Michelle Chappelle is coming, y'all. I'm just telling y'all. I can't wait. I'll even feed early in just in case I don't want to miss it. I think, I think Michelle Chappelle is coming, y'all. The Holy Spirit is telling me that Michelle Chappelle will be on live at around 6.30. Between 6.30 and 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, Michelle Chappelle will be there. Michelle Chappelle will be on. Uh, Michelle Chappelle will be live tonight, and the title of her comedy show tonight is "Word on the Street." So, "Word on the Street," y'all. She come all gas, no brakes. Let me get my seat ready. Michelle Chappelle will be making a grand entrance tonight between six thirty and seven o'clock, right here Central Standard Time. And the title of this comedian show is "Word on the Street." So, I am about to get up off of here so I can go eat. And do the things. Give me some rest so I can be prepared. Y'all get ready because Michelle Chappelle is coming. 6.30 between 7 o'clock. Y'all get there early. $3 at the door. Make sure y'all pay y'all $3 coming in because I don't want to have to call nobody out for stealing and, and, and walking into the venue without paying their $3. It ain't nothing but $3. And, and that's it. I love reaching the lost and praying for the sick and teaching the word of God. Casting out demons is my favorite thing to help people. VIP seating, a front row experience, $5. Yes, the VIP is $5, but regular admission is $3. I have a whole bunch of VIP people, and I thank God for each and every one of y'all. I thank God for those of y'all that even pay um, y'all friends' way. Some people come in and they pay their friends' way. Some people just come in and they, they send $6. This for me and my friend. So I just thank God for that, y'all. But y'all get ready to see Michelle Chappelle 
do her thing on tonight. She is coming. Word on the street. Y'all better be ready. I love y'all with the love of Christ. But God loves each and every one of us more. True circle of love. Let's get ready and let's get prepared to go out and serve the city. Be more careful. Baltimore, Maryland. On May the 2nd through May the 6th. To God be the glory. And I love y'all. God bless. I'll see y'all later.